everyone, I'm Gitana from Supermicro's technology enablement team. Today we'll be setting up Stable Swarm UI on NVIDIA L40S Supermicro's Super Server. To get started, you'll need Supermicro's GPU Super Server, the SYS521GE TNRT, NVIDIA's L40S GPUs, Intel Xeon Gold 6448H CPUs. For our operating system, we're using Ubuntu 22.04. We'll be setting up stable Swarm UIs following the GitHub instructions and using Stable Diffusion's Excel, Stable Diffusion Medium, and Stable Video Diffusion models from Hugging Face. Stable Swarm UI is a platform created from Stability AI. Today we'll be setting up Stable Swarm UI on Supermicro Super Server with NVIDIA L40S and Intel Xeon chips. The first step will be to run NVIDIA SMI. This is the system management interface tool that allows us to view the GPU and CPU health of our system. Next, we'll go to our terminal and create a new folder where we'll house this repository called Swarm Demo. The following step will be to clone the repository from Stable Swarm UI, navigate to your nearest browser and install Stable Swarm UI using git clone Stable Swarm UI. Since we're using Ubuntu 2204, we're using a Linux operating system. Therefore, you need to scroll down the page and follow the instructions for installing Stable Swarm UI on Linux. Okay, so we want to change in the, the directory for Stable Swarm UI and find the location of the launch, the install Linux script. Once we run this script, we'll have a web page over on the side. We have some legal notices that we need to approve of and agree to. This is just ensuring that we're following the license and agreements with Stability AI with the Stable Swarm installer. After that, we just need to choose the path to install this operation. Okay, we'll hit install. And then we're gonna go with the default configuration for this installer. And while this takes a second to process, we see an error on the left. Note that this error is occurring because we're using a remote system. So we can't initially open our website with a local browser since we're using a VPN. Therefore, we have to do some configuration with the URL, updating it from localhost to be our actual IP address, and then possibly updating the port forwarding to a different port since this would be busy. Our initial demo was on 01 and we'll be using port 02. Updating the IP address and the port forwarding is easy. Once you're able to launch the application on the web browser and you've either done port forwarding through an SSH tunnel or simply creating a second session with the terminal and creating a port forwarding there. We'll want to navigate to the website again after the installation script has fully finished loading. Note that we're using the default values here. Please always refer back to the documentation for Stable Swarm UI for more information. So our first step, we'll go to the utilities page and navigate to the server page and go under server configuration. Under server configuration, scroll down until you hit the network tab. This will be where we're able to change our host and our port. Our host, local host, can be configured to 0.0.0. Dot zero, dot zero, I think it's four zeros, um, 
to be the local host. And then also you can update the port to whichever port you prefer. Since we've already made a demo, we'll be using port 7802. So you go to server, server configuration, scroll all the way down to network settings related to networking and the server. Modify it from local host to be 0.0.0.0. And then you may also update the port. The warning that we get is because our server is located on a different network, which does not have access to a web browser. Since we want to view it locally, we're going to update that here. Now that we've established this connection and we can host our server, note that we have the SDXL base image preloaded in this configuration. The official Stable Diffusion SDXL model will be preloaded in this. If you would like to add in more models such as SD3 medium or stable to video diffusion, you'll need to go to Hugging Face. Let's go roll ahead and view our other demonstration. We have Stable Swarm UI in the Models tab under Stable Diffusion, Official Stable Diffusion Models. We want to list that by typing LL or LS. This is where you'll host all the models and save the safe tensors files that you download from Hugging Face. As a quick review, go to Hugging Face Stability AI, select the model in which you'd like to download, scroll down to the Files tab under that model, and continue scrolling until you find the file that has Safe Tensor. There should only be one of these files per model. Once you've located this file, please download it and then upload it to your directory. For ability to use this in the demonstration. Note we can do this again with Stable Diffusion 3 Medium. And we're also going to scroll down, find the model that we'd like to locate, select it, navigate to files under the tab and then navigate to the SD3 medium safe tensors file. This is the file that you'll need to download. All other files will be included. On to our next portion of the video, where I'm interviewing Tai Tiet, and he gives you a holistic overview of this demo running on Supermicro servers. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Um, my name's Kitana. I'm from Technology Enablement, and today I'm here with my colleague Tai. Welcome in. Yeah, the demo that we have here is uh, using Stable Diffusion. Uh, mm -hmm. Directly, you can set it up from the GitHub. Uh, Stability AI, they're providing very nice UI and uh, clean instruction from A to Z, how you can set it up within 30 minutes. The only thing extra step that we're doing here is I download a couple of different type of model that we can do test to image generation and also video generation from the image. Okay, so that would be these models that we have here under the model tab. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you walk through a single example for me, please? Yeah, so uh, when you're launching the website using the port and IP address that we're setting up, follow the instruction, there will be a generate tab. And in generate tab, there's a couple of things on the left uh, panel that you can select. Um, but mainly, uh, if you don't want to do the video, I will disable it. So okay. you can do test to image generation only. Uh, SID negative one basically is a random SID. Okay. And you can let it be like this set up so they can randomly generate the image. So the step is something that you want to play around with. Um, for this uh, system that we have, 20 step is pretty much is a good, that can generate a good image already. Um, and how many images that you want to generate from the single test prompt? Uh, let's try one for now. So we entered the text prompt, a cute cat. Now we're just going to generate that image That's correct. using SDXL. Yeah. Since we uh, didn't click the toggle for the core parameter for video, it'll just generate the image. Yeah, so you see it's pretty fast. It I can see. It generate the image uh, 20 steps within a few seconds. 
um, and if you want to use a different model you can select in here from this step for example you uh, using stable diffusion 3 uh, in this case okay the same prompt let's see how does it look like okay we got another cute yeah. cat <laughs> extremely fast yeah extremely fast and the quality is a little different because they're using the different model they were tuned on the different data set and so on. Mm -hmm. And you can always come by and buy the image history in here. Okay. Um, for all the image that has been generated. And you see the new cat and the old cat that we just generated. And let me try something interesting. For example, a sport car. And this time, let's try to generate uh, more than one image. For example, 10 image in this case, using the model is still SD3. Okay, so the more images that we generate, are they going to be in a sequential queue or are they being generated simultaneously? Um, so they will be doing in parallel based on the system that we have in. So the software that we are using right now for the metrics, they can generate image in parallel. Okay. Yeah, but uh, it's common that you can see one image is finished and they moving on to another one. For example, we want to be generating a lot of images because we want to have a higher throughput. So for example, if there are a lot more people working on the same system, mm -hmm. um, we would be able to really generate the same quality work with short times as well. And uh, we already generate 10 different images of the sport car. Okay. Uh, so this is pretty good and they uh, can generate pretty fast as well. So it's helpful for some of designer yeah. to bring some the net design product. Yeah, definitely a good place for them to start. If we wanted to just generate a single video then, instead of doing one, we would uh, reduce that back down to one image mm -hmm. and then just do a single video and then just press generate. Yeah. And then what happens here is we're taking this image as the input for the uh, video, right? Yeah, technically they will generate an image um, and then they're using that image to generate a video. Yeah, if you like some image, we can always come back to the seat that they have been generated uh, randomly and then you enter that seat number into the uh, parameter here to generate the same image again. Okay. Yeah. Great. It looks like it's almost done loading there. Thank you so much for explaining this demo. Yeah, so um, one more thing I would like to show is actually we have a lot of options for the video as well. Okay. So by automatically they pick one of the model for video generation, this uh, SBDST. Mm -hmm. um, we have another model called SBDST11, uh, and then it's up to the user. Uh, you want to generate a different video using a different model. I see. So to modify the video model, you'd have to go to this parameter up here mm -hmm. um, rather than select it into the model cards. Correct. I see. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see, that's almost done. And then this gives you just frames per second, mm -hmm. um, number of steps. So it's kind of similar um, parameters that we have available for others. Um, and you can also modify the video format that you want it to um, yeah. generate to. Yeah. We can enlarge the videos here. Right. Okay, and looks like this is all done. Yeah, and the good thing is uh, if you're not sure about uh, which kind of parameter that's selecting or choosing, you can always reference by looking on the question mark here. Mm -hmm. It will kind of explain uh, what is it about and how it's helpful to generate image or video based on that. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, did you have, when you were building this demo, did you have um, any struggles or was it pretty straightforward when you were working with the Super Micro system? Um, so, the demo that we're building here is based on open source. So there's a lot of things that we need to modify and then um, sometimes they don't have it in the instruction. But uh, thanks to our team, we have a lot of experts here that we can work together to build this uh, demo together. Mm -hmm. And uh, so microsystem is pretty reliable and running amazing. Um, uh, I think we can do a lot of uh, stretching and reaching the max capacity on this kind of demo. Yeah. Wonderful. Thanks so much Ty for your time, Ty. Mm -hmm. um, we'll talk again soon. See ya. Yeah. Thanks everyone for watching today. We showed you how to quickly set up Stable Swarm UI on Supermicro's super server with NVIDIA L40S. 
Now it's your turn to explore these powerful systems if you're interested in testing out the machines for yourself. I highly recommend that you check out Supermicro's Jumpstart program. This free platform allows you to remotely test and benchmark on Supermicro servers, including those powered by Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA. It is a fantastic way to see these systems handle your workloads without needing to set up things locally. Just head over to Supermicro's Jumpstart site, register for an account, and schedule a test session. You'll access fully configured systems with SSH, VNC, and Web IPMI, making it easy to validate and benchmark your applications. Once you're here, configure your machine to your liking, schedule the period you'd like to be using it for. You can either have Ubuntu or Windows Server. Um, there's some BIOS settings you can configure. Note this is unique to your own system and then complete the registration process. For additional resources, please refer back to this list here. Thanks for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, be sure to like and share it with friends. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to like and subscribe for more content from our team. And if you want to stay up to date with more tech tutorials, tech insights, and behind the scenes content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoy exploring these powerful servers with Supermicro's Jumpstart program.